you make the point, among others, in your coverage of this, that uh, there are no libertarians in Silicon Valley during a bank failure. Uh, that's absolutely right, Lawrence. Um, look, these guys, the, the venture capitalists, the venture investors who've been, who, who were absolutely pleading, insisting that the Fed and the FDIC and the Treasury Department bail out uh, their banks, these are the same guys who've been saying, uh, look, we need to get government off our backs. If government stands aside, then we in Silicon Valley will give you flying cars and what have you. Uh, they're the same people who say it's absolutely unfair to, uh, to give uh, uh, college students debt relief. And yet, uh, you know, the other adage that I quoted is where you stand depends on where you sit. And these guys thought they were sitting in the catbird seat uh, until all of a sudden uh, they needed government to step in and save them. And uh, the banking has traditionally been the simply the easiest way, the easiest way and the easiest business in which to get rich and live well. Uh, these people couldn't manage the very simple exercise of managing a bank. Uh, that's right. Uh, you, you know, in the old days, traditionally, you know, if you were a banker, as long as you kept your arms and head inside the bus, you would make money. Um, things have gotten a little bit more co complicated. And in this case, it's the same old story. It's the story of bank runs from time immemorial. Uh, the banks collect deposits, which are hot. They can be withdrawn by the depositors at any moment. And they back them up with long-term assets. At Silicon Valley Bank, most of its assets were uh, securities, treasury securities, agency securities that had maturities more than 10 years out. So they couldn't be sold uh, in any, with any speed when all of a sudden all the depositors wanted to get through the door and, and exit. And that's what happened. Um, they, uh, they tried to sell. They knew if they did sell, they would take a, an absolutely immense loss on those transactions. So they failed. Is there a lesson in this uh, for bank depositors out there in the country? Is it is it is the lesson that it is safer to be in the bigger uh, national brand name banks? Well, I, I think that's what the Fed and the FDIC and the Treasury were actually afraid of. Uh, they knew if they didn't take this really dramatic step of guaranteeing all deposits at uh, Silicon Valley Bank, then today, on Monday, at the first opportunity, uh, depositors would rush to the big banks for, for safety. And look, those banks, J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they're big enough. We don't really want them to get any bigger. So I think the, the agencies did the right thing, which was saying, look, what, however much you have there, Forget about the FDIC cap on insurance, which is $250,000 per depositor. We're going to guarantee it all. So you, you should be safe to leave your money where it is. You don't have to flee these mid-sized banks or uh, credit unions or what have you. You can stay where you are.